Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel and welcome to October, where I like to get into the spirit of Halloween and play some games that are befitting of the season. Ah, Halloween's was one once one of my favorite holidays. We used to do uh, huge parties and things like that, and, and now my life's a little calmer, but I am gonna get some holiday Halloween style board games out on the table. Now my mission here is to get a few out through the course of Halloween. I hope I can accomplish that. As many of you know, I've been dealing with some personal issues, uh, more, mostly medically related. Uh, won't get into details, but um, and thank you for all your thoughts and well wishes to those who have sent them. Uh, I am doing, I'm doing okay, just got some things to deal with. Uh, but uh, I hope that doesn't prevent me from getting in all the different games that I want to highlight during this season. Now today, we're going to be playing Lobotomy. And uh, I want to start by prefacing something. Lobotomy is a horror-based game about patients in a mental institution who have serious psychotic breaks, may even be, um, uh, I mean, killers, right, possibly. And this is in no way uh, reflections of my thoughts or anything on mental health and mental health conditions. I just want to state that up front. This is a game. It is a horror game, and there's been many, many horror stories set in asylums, and this is one of them. Our characters are criminally insane. They uh, have a variety of things like uh, OCD and aggression and uh, schizophrenia, to name a few, uh, anxiety, neuroses, uh, things like that. And in the game, they've turned those into abilities and powers that help them throughout the storyline. And in the storyline, we are being attacked by gruesome patients, terrible scavengers, which might just be visitors, I don't know, and evil nurses along with the terrible warden who's a giant demon carrying a corpse around with him. And there's a variety of scenarios. Now the, the plot of this is that our characters are most likely very delusional and these things are not real. Or if they are real, they're not as perceived. And so we have things like we make imagination tests because our imaginations are running wild and we have things uh, that make us very uh, interesting in our, our characters. So we're going to be playing that. However, if you are offended by anything that, that might, sh might shed light on mental health in a negative way, even though this game doesn't intend it, it's just a horror game about, about this type of stuff, please don't watch this. However, if you are still here and interested in watching Lobotomy, then, uh, and you want to know about the rules, as you can see, I've already set up. So um, I set up for the game. I did do a whole series on this already. I highly recommend that you go back and watch that series if you want to get to know how the game is played, because uh, you will get to know it all as we go, but I'm not going to explain a lot of the things in the initial setup and how we got our cards set up with our characters. And in fact, I'm completely set up for the scenario we're about to begin. I'm going to be playing three characters. One of them was from the previous playthrough. I drew them at random. There was Helena Swan, but I also have Dale Walker and Arnie Connors, uh, which are representative of people that are might you might recognize from movies and TV. So, uh, and they have special abilities and special things that define them. I saved one thing for um, our setup uh, that I'll go over in a minute with each character, but I did want to say that our first, very first uh, encounter is going to be with uh, a killer clown. It is called Balloon Frenzy, and as you can see on the board, there's a number of these balloon tokens that we have to collect. And because I'm playing a three-player game, they start off a little easier. Our characters already have a balloon token, which, this, that, which allows us to, in fact, attack the clown. 
Now, the clown in a three-player game has eight health, so he's not super tough, but he bounces all over the board uh, because it's a, in this particular scenario because it's like a frenzy state. Um, and I will show you his card. This is the clown. He's awesome looking, isn't he? Just evil clown. Um, he's got some um, skills. He's a boss, and he has avoidance five. That means he's going to be really hard to kill. And it's supposed to be 4x, the number of players. So uh, four times number of players. But uh, in this scenario, it says if you're playing with three, his health is eight. He has two defense. He's got three. He, will, he has uh, needs a three or better to hit. He rolls eight dice. Plus, he's got like an area effect, which we'll go over as we play. Uh, he's pretty nasty, and we're going to have to deal with him, because to win this scenario, we have to beat him down while still dealing with the horror of mental patients and the scavengers and the nurses that are running around the building. Here is the, one of the mental patients. We'll get into their stories and all that stuff as we play. Like I said, I'm not going to do the whole setup again. The game runs in uh, basically simple turns. Uh, we're each going to take a turn where we get... Uh, Based, we get X number of actions. Now, uh, most of our characters, I think all of these characters, no, two of them have three actions and one of them has two actions, so we're not the fastest. There's, I think there's one character that gets four actions. Um, and an action can consist of a number of things, like moving, attacking, uh, picking something up. I think uh, there's a lot of free actions as well that we can do. Picking up a balloon, for example, is a free action. We just have to be in the space. And... The game is hard. I'm going to start with that right now. A lot of people house rule it. In fact, uh, um, my my good pal and fellow YouTuber, Cat Weasel, who I love watching his videos. If you don't get a chance, go watch his Arkham Horror stuff. It's the right time of the year for that. Um, he recommended that the creatures don't, they have to stop at a door before they come through so they don't gang up on you. I think I will use that one where when the monsters are about to come through the door, they're going to stop first and then come through the door on the next turn. Otherwise, they have a tendency to really mob your character, especially since I have one that's relatively slow in Arnie Connors. Um, what else can I tell you about the game before we get started? There's lots of things you'll see on the board. There's there's doors which will uncover what whether they're locked or blocked or anything like that. There's cab file cabinets and, and bookshelves. These are called memory shrines where we can collect the memories uh, of our character, they, they start to get lucid memories of what their life was, and uh, it's very, very valuable because that's one of the ways they get new abilities and things like that. Uh, each character also has two abilities, and they also have uh, uh, the ability to force things through the use of sanity. We're, we'll talk about all that as we play. Like I said, I'm not going to go over massive amounts of setup. I think we're just going to dive right into it and start with our first horror game of the year uh, for 2021. Though our, probably our whole year has felt like a horror movie to, ever, to a lot of folks. Uh, we're going to get started right now. So looking forward to playing this with you and showing off the game. And again, if you want to know anything about rules or setup, go back to my original video series. There's also plenty of others out there that, are on, that you can see on the table. Um, and uh, this is just a riot. So enjoy, and let's get started. You know, it's a funny world we live in. I swear, as soon as I decide to start filming something in my studio... Every noise, every external noise that could possibly happen starts to infect my world. Dogs, neighbor dog starts barking, my dog starts barking, lawnmowers go by, they start mowing the lawn across the way. It's just it's crazy. It's so professional, it's amazing. But anyway, we are going to be playing the scenario Balloon Balloon Frenzy. Hey, watch this! <laughs> And to win this scenario, we have to defeat the clown. It says when the clown has four or less health remaining, he will run away. So we're going to talk about Balloon, balloon Frenzy. Um, and basically, what's interesting about it is the clown himself is going to do some crazy stuff. He's going to be bouncing all over the board. It really is like a frenzy type scenario. Um, and again, we're going to trigger the next scenario. I may not do two scenarios. A normal game consists of two scenarios. I may only do one. Uh, and we also get a handicap because we're three players, and I think I shared this with you. Every character starts with a balloon, and the clown only has eight health. But every time um, the clown deals any damage to us, crazy stuff's going to happen. So um, there's no real backstory to read on that. It's just going to start happening, so we're going to get into that. And as we play, each character is to teach, take their first turns. I'll tell you a little a bit about them. This is the first player token, and it is going to go to Helena. So basically, the order of play is going to be Helena. Daryl and Arnie in that order, and that will maintain. We'll just keep going back and forth uh, as we go through the game, and each turn will consist of the players taking their turn, and then the enemy 
taking their turn. So we're going to start with Helena Swan. Let's take a look at her. Helena Swan claims to have been born in 1774. She is able to talk about her life in Victorian England with astonishing detail. She suffers from photophobia and clinical vampirism. Admitted to the asylum after being linked to several cases of cannibalism. So as you can see, Helena is not exactly ordinary. Um, she has an imagination of seven, a defense of one, combat of four, means she needs a four or better to hit, ten health, and she gets three actions. Um, we do have some ability, she has a special ability called afterlife. After dealing a final blow to a monster, she gets to recover health. That's pretty good. She also has two special abilities, shadow step, uh, when she activates it, you can see that it's going to go on a health, on a cooldown timer. Uh, but when she activates it, she gains ethereal movement for this round, meaning she can move through walls and obstacles. It's pretty nice. I also gave her hypnotic eyes as an attack. It's got a range of one and does eight dice. It says if this attack deals damage, you can move one space in any direction and recover health. So she's pretty good that way. The one thing we still have to do, now she has a gas pipe, but I only saw one gas pipe item card and I needed two. So we'll just share one between uh, Dale Walker and her. And I'll just keep track of the the um, um, gas pipes, each one of the gas pipes durability separately. And the items do have durability. But we do have to do one thing before we start. And that is she is schizophrenic and has OCD. So we get to draw a card from both decks and pick one that we're going to keep. So I think, well, we could draw two from one, but we're going to draw one from each. So this is the OCD deck. And we're going to draw a card from it and see what she gets. She's not going to be able to keep both of them, but that's okay. So she's going to have Watch Your Back. We'll take a look at this one in just a moment. And then we're going to draw another one from the Schizophrenia deck. And uh, here we don't need to do a ton of... Now we'll just get that, and now we'll take a look at both of those and see which one she is going to keep. So, we have, uh, let's see, the Schizophrenia ability is Positive Thinking. It's a utility, <clears throat> cost one action. It says recover two health to a character within five range. Hmm, she can be our healer overall. And then this one is Watch Your Back. It's utility again. It takes one action. It says switch spaces with a character in three, and that character recovers one health. I think we're just going to take the positively thinking ability. So she's got her two personal abilities and a, um, um, a schizophrenia ability of positive thinking. Now, what's the reverse of that? You can make up your own imagination on how that goes. And by the way, this is her memory deck, just uh, as a point. And she does have this track as well. But since she's supposed to have a gas pipe, and I could only find one card for the gas pipe. So I'll keep track of the, her durability on the pipe over here somewhere. Um, now, uh, that is going to be her. Now let's go, I, this is the one thing I wanted to do was get their last special abilities with you so you could see what they are. This is Dale Walker, or the Day Walker, or as you can see, Blade, I guess. I don't know, another vampire, huh? But it says, uh, Dale Walker used to be a night manager at the hotel, but started suffering from muscle weakness and light cognitive impairment. His doctor suspected vitamin D deficiencies, but referred him to a psychiatrist. Dale has been in the asylum for three years now. He's got acrobatics as an ability. He can lose one health to move two spaces in any direction. You can um, leave spaces with monsters. That's very powerful because you normally can't. Uh, and gain plus one attack rolls until the end of the round. Uh, once you've done that, I can do that every turn if I want to, as long as I'm willing to sacrifice the health. He's got an imagination of six, one defense. He's a four better to hit, ten, unless he's using um, something special that has its own hit modifier. But normally, even with like his weapons, he has a four better. Ten health and three abilities. Now he gets our three actions. He gets uh, something from the aggression and the OCD deck. So we'll start with the aggression because we haven't seen that deck yet. Here's aggression. These are usually pretty attacky. <laughs> So he suffers from aggression. In this case, it's gladiatorial, a gladiator spirit. He's got a gladiator spirit. It's attack. Attack each monster once with a number of dice equal to the number of monsters on the space at the start of the attack. Um, attack gains. I can't remember what that specific ability is, but I'll remember it as we go. Um, it's there's a lot of uh, symbology in the game, and the other thing he suffers from is OCD. Right. So we're going to get another OCD card out and see what that is. Let's. Uh, do it a quick shuffle. I hope you don't mind the sound in the background. If you can hear it, it's now, I think now they're edging. Because, you know, that's normal in the middle of the day. Uh, utility doesn't cost anything, but it says 
use at the beginning of a turn, double your movement, this or your actions this turn, at least half of it has to be used for movement. Oh man, I, I like that Gladiator Spirit, but I like this a lot better, so he's going to take this OCD ability instead, and he will get rid of the aggression ability. So good job there for him. He's got some cool abilities coming up. And last but not least, we're going to have Arnie. Arnie Connors was raised in a pathological environment of poverty and street gangs. To survive, he developed a, dis a disassociative, disassociative paranoia, or persona rather, a cybernetic android disguised as a human being. His criminal record uh, does state that he is in fact a killing machine. Uh, this is Arnie Connors. He's got an imagination of five. That's not great. Two defense. So he's our fighter. He, he only needs a three or, or better to hit. That's really good. He's got 11 health and two. He's slow. He's got two actions. Uh, he can lose a health to gain an action once per turn. That's really powerful, actually. Um, and he's going to pull from anxiety, neurosis, or aggression. So we're going to take one from each, and we're going to decide which one he gets. This is going to be the anxiety and neurosis. Let's see what he gets. Um... Flashbang. Well, this seems very, very suitable. All monsters on your space get minus one to attack for this round. It's got a five round cooldown. So uh, that I don't know if he's going to take that yet because we also have to look at the aggression ability that he gets and see what that says. So let's uh, draw that one and see what it is. Oh, that's, we just drew that. That's weird because you saw me shuffle it. We're not going to draw the same thing. I want to give you something different. All right. Um, okay, <laughs> this is the third time I've... Maybe he's meant to have a gladiator spirit there. Let's see. Um, there you go. Helicopter smash. Okay. Uh, does seven dice. Um, it's a uh, melee attack. He also has an area effect attack with three dice and melee for every for each enemy. That's three dice for each enemy. That's pretty good. I kind of like, like... He's got a pretty good attack already that does a similar thing here. You can see it's got an area effect. So I think we're going to take the flashbang after all. Yeah, we're going to take the flashbang, and he will get rid of the aggression ability. And that is the special abilities, the extra special abilities we got. You can see that he's carrying a club. Uh, it rolls five dice. says you may lose one durability to add one uh, even after the attack roll. So that's really good. But the dur he's only got a five durability, so he could lose that weapon. This is his ability, one of his abilities. Chop, chop. It's an attack. Six dice. Has the critical strike ability. Or it can be an area effect. Four dice. And it hits every monster around him and then he's got plow through this one costs one of his actions says move three spaces in a direction so that helps overcome his low uh, action count each enemy on the way excluding include excluding the last space is knocked down and stunned removed and remove and any revealed locked or barred door so you can just bash through doors um, on its way and lose one health for each door removed this way. So you can just like railroad right through doors and everything. It's pretty cool. We'll look at the other abilities as we go. I don't think we're in a hurry to uh, look at all the different abilities. We'll see them as we go. Now, they do have other a uh, couple other skills that they can have. They're under their cards right now. They may come out later, but leave them as a surprise. I hope that you don't mind that. And with that being said, we are going to get started with Helena and start taking her turn. Now remember our mission is to take on the clown. Helena has three actions, but there's absolutely no way she can get out the door here for her and get to the clown. So I think she's just going to start gathering some things. It's a good way to start. So for her first action, she'll move here. I think she'll leave this for Arnie because he's so slow. Maybe not. I don't know. Uh, this These first rounds are going to be very slow. They're, we're going to be moving a lot. we got to get to these balloons. Uh, there's one right here, so maybe we'll go one, two, Three. Now she's in between those doors. She's going to have to check that door to see if it's open. Not all doors are locked. Only ones with a highlight have a special door token on. Some are just doors or openings. Um, there is a corpse in here and a balloon, so that's a lot of stuff to get right there. We just got to get over there. And unfortunately, that's it. That's all she gets to do because we're not we have anything to fight yet. We don't have anything going on. Uh, so we go to then to uh, Dale. Uh, Dale Walker is going to go next. And this is him here with the green. You can see he's doing like a blade thing. He thinks he's he thinks he's a vampire or something. So for his first action, he's going to move out this door. There's a, one of the balloons right there. Remember, the balloons are what give us uh, the ability to attack. Now, there's another scenario that uses these balloons for other things. We'll leave that alone for now. This All we do in this case is they give us the ability to attack the clown with a plus one modifier. So he steps out his door. The first thing he's going to do next is check this door. For a second action, it is locked four. Hmm. 
Do I want to try and overcome that or run around to the other side? I did see a door that I missed right here. Whoosh. I could run around to the other side, maybe start heading that direction and get into the area with all that stuff to collect. There's a lot of stuff over there. Uh, four, I don't know if he can do that. He's not, his imagine, well, hmm. Uh, we could try to unlock the door, but I think he's not going to be that guy. I think what we're going to do with him is that was his second action. So for his third action, he's just going to move here. He's heading down the hallway. And then we got Arnie. He's going to come out his door. One, two, he's going to move into there, but he won't be able to collect. I, th I think it is an action. I'm going to have to look on this cheat sheet. I haven't played in a while, so i got to remember. I think it's an action to pick up the corpse and see what it is. Now, each of these tokens have stuff underneath them, so we're going to get stuff as we go along. Yeah, so pretty cool. Now, um, I don't know how often the clown's going to go. We'll see, because I may have just hosed ourselves right out of the gate. We'll have to see. Since the first turn, I'm going to do a takes back seat here. I think we're going to do this. We're going to make... So for his third action, they're still continuing to move. He might as well take that test. Okay, so we're going to roll some dice. Now, he needs to get four successes to unlock the door. And he's going. he's got basically six dice where he needs a four plus. And why does he why does he have six dice? Let's take a look. His imagination is six. So that's gonna give him this many dice to try and unlock that door. He needs fours. He needs he needs four fours. Let's see if he can do it. And he's not the most imaginative guy on our group. He's the second most imaginative person. Let's see what he does though. One, two, he did it. Three, four. That was a really good move for us right there. I'm glad I chose to do that instead. So he did succeed at unlocking the door, which simply means that this door token comes off the board and this door is now open to all enemies and people included. And the balloon is right inside. So we'll get another balloon token to fight the, uh, the villain with. All right. Now, after we've all taken our actions, the turn order is quite simple. Um, uh, basically, we're going to, I'm looking at my cheat sheet to show if I can show you this. Is pretty always always go on BGG and look and see if you can find cheat sheets. <laughs> All right, so on a player's turn, we're going to reduce cooldowns. We don't oh, hold on, this is way out of whack. Let me pull back. There you go. On the first turn, oh, we reduce cooldowns. We don't have to do that uh, because nobody used new abilities. Then we go, the first player goes first, players spend their action points. Do do do. All done. Then the monster's turn, we're going to draw a movement card um, and we're going to take a bunch of special effects. There you go. These are all the actions that we can taste. Here's how tests work, all this stuff. Line of sight, good, good cheat sheet. Now, how do we move and determine what's going to happen with the enemies? Hey, watch this! <laughs> so here we are. This is the movement deck. This big giant deck is going to determine all of the actions for the enemies. And again, we are doing Balloon Frenzy. This, the reason I have this out is this has meaning, this little green st uh, star here. And it's scenario-specific, meaning if we do pull a card, one of these cards that has a green star on it, we will, in fact, take that special action for this scenario with the clown. And while I'm at it, I didn't show you the clown's miniature. Here it is. not painted, but, man, it's a really great little miniature for a board game. There he is right there holding his balloon. He's awesome, and he's pretty far away from us. He's, at, But it doesn't really matter in this scenario that he's far away. Okay, so we're going to do that. We're going to cut it once, and this will not, we will not shuffle or cut again. Here we go. What do we get? Okay, um, Shattering Screech. Characters roll imagination tests, or they lose one sanity. You know, I always seem to start with something like that. Uh, then we're going to um, have that exactly, that green thing happen. We're going to move the warden, and we're going to have two... Um, mental patients spawn on the board. We're also going to move the ones that exist there now. But let's first start with our imagination tests. The other form of imagination test is incredibly simple. You take two dice and if you can ro roll below your imagination, you succeed. So she did succeed. She does not take the sanity hit. Dale Walker has a six. Can he do it? He did not. He rolled a seven. So what's going to happen is we're going to take one of these red tokens here and it's going to start to go up this track we've used our first sanity, whether we wanted to or not. Last but not least, we have Arnie. He's only got a five, but he did manage to do it. So only Dale took a sanity hit from the, the crazy screeching that went on. Now, um, I need to look at the scenario to see what the special effect is for this, um, this, this special event. It says a sur surge green, so it's called a green surge. It says randomize a balloon token if there aren't any in the discard pile. Great, so we're gonna randomize a balloon token. 
We do not have any balloon tokens in the discard pile, so we're not going to worry about that now. But we are also then, if you look at the card, the other thing that we're going to note is that the Warden moves, so we have to move him to the two space. He is our timer. If he should reach the 12 space before we defeat the clown, we have lost this scenario. Defeating the clown in this case is getting him down to half his health. So uh, that is it for, for that now. Uh, the clown does move. He picks a character at random, uh, it says, um, in this scenario, and it says he's going to attempt to attack him. Now he's going to, get, if he can't reach the person, he'll go to the closest one. I don't think he's going to be able to reach anybody because his movement uh, is three. So he's just going to move. But let's roll uh, one, two, two is Helena, three, four is Dale Walker, and five, six is Arnie. He rolls a three, so he's going after Dale, but Dale is, well, right here, so that is the closest person. Now, the clown does not have any abilities to go through walls, so he has to, he has to adhere to the uh, going the shortest distance, which is, I think, going to be one, two, and three into there as he's heading out that door. Now, he is not stopped by any doors we haven't checked. If we check a door, we find out that it's barricaded or locked. They can't pass through it. It's pretty cool. But if it's just a door, uh, it, they, do, they do go through it. Now, remember, I'm playing with the house rule that if a monster is about to pass through the door, they pause uh, and then go through it the next turn. So, actually, I think this was here. Yeah. Um, okay. And uh, that's it for the clown. Now we're going to move everybody else. So, uh, the scavengers, we'll, st we'll do it by quadrant. So, we'll start with the scavenger here first. Uh, let me see, he's got a two movement, and he, they always move toward the closest person. So he's going to move one, two. We're, we're going to have to deal with him pretty soon. He's in this space right here. And then the mental patient that's way down here in the bottom corner is going to move as well, but he's only got a movement of one, so I think the easiest thing for him to do is move right there. Up in the top quadrant, we already moved the clown, but we do have this, uh, this mental patient. He'll move here, and I guess he'll move here. That's the closest way they're just, they need to get out of that space. Um, and that's it for there. There's two in each space right now, except for there's a couple of nurses on the board as well. Up in here, we have a couple of things we need to do. So first, we'll just move the mental patient one. He will move to here. Uh, I think he will move one, two to there. And then the nurse, the nurse has only one movement as well. She will move to here. She's starting to come into building from her shift. Now, here's the thing. This might just be a normal old person, nurse, that works in the building. But our perception of her is she is some evil being, right? And that's one of the things I like about the game is how it, how it twists that up, makes it interesting. And then we'll go to this last quadrant here. We have this guy. He's pretty close to getting us, so he's going to move out of the hallway. The scavenger, I think, the probably the fastest way is to go one, two to here. And the nurse is right here, so she'll just move right there on her way out the door. And that's all the movement for the monsters. Now we are going to spawn, randomly, two more patients. Now, let's grab them out. And I, I know I sh I've showed you the miniatures before in the last uh, time we played this game, which is a long time ago. But these are the miniatures for the patients. And how you spawn them is real simple. You roll a d4 for the quadrant and a d12 for the location. So the first one's going to be 4, 9. That is down here, quadrant 4, space 9, which is going to be right there. And then the second one is going to be 2, 7, which is up in the top. Go right here, two, uh, seven, is going to be way out here with the nurse. So I guess the nurse is coming in with a new patient, basically. How thematic is that? That's so cool. All right, um, and that is going to be the end of our first turn. I'm going to stop this episode here because I did a lot of explanation. I don't want it to be too long. But in the next episode, I'm going to try and complete this scenario. So be prepared for a long one, and I hope you're excited about it. It's time to really get our horror on for holiday horror. Hope I didn't mispronounce that, just say it the wrong way. Horror for the, the holidays, and it's gonna be great. And I cannot wait to see how this game plays out. Our heroes are, I don't know if I'd call them heroes, our, our characters are on their way trying to defeat the evil clown. We'll see if they can succeed. All right, take care, and I'll see you in the next episode. Have a good one.